<laughs> and a yellow hat. <laughs> Where do you get your information? <laughs> I get my information from Paper Tiger Television. Hemos <laughs> presentado. <laughs> Hablan nuestros dirigentes. Escúchenos todos los días a esta misma hora por las ondas de Radio Sandino, voz oficial del Frente Sandinista de Liberación Nacional. Siguiente programa, la nueva canción. Trying to get the football scores from yesterday on the U.S. Armed Forces Radio Network. The thing that I really miss the most about being here is being able to watch sports on television. Although during the baseball season, they show Monday Night Baseball and NBC Game of the Week live down here. The whole this whole country is baseball wild, especially with four Nicaraguan players in the major leagues. That's uh, David Green, Porfirio, Porfirio Altamira, Dennis Martinez, and Sandinista Al Williams with the Minnesota Twins. And, uh, I heard this was a political show. Sports is very important in Nicaragua. I heard a, a typical scene in the movie Under Fire, which actually is very realistic, is they interview a young teenager and they say, well, who do you like? And he says, I like the Sandinistas and I like the Baltimore Orioles, which is by far and away the most popular team in Nicaragua because they've had a Nicaraguan pitcher for about eight years now named Dennis Martinez. So uh, you get news of the world though, huh? <laughs> in English you get the BBC World Service, which is the best by far and away, and Voice of America, which has an incredibly biased viewpoint on what's going on in the region, and then the U.S. Armed Forces Radio Network, which, despite its name, isn't so bad because all it does is replay regular radio shows from commercial stations in the States. So you get the news from ABC, from Mutual Network, from CBS, from, you can get, um, now, what's it? All Things Considered from NPR every day at 4 o'clock. So if you get home early, that's always a real one. And then there's a whole wide range of news in Spanish. I mean, everything from from the ultra right to the ultra left and religious stations, you name it. On the radio, there's no control of the press at all. There are 52 radio stations, and 35 of them are private, and there's no censorship before or after. <coughs> In the newspapers, there is prior control, um, especially with regard to things that have a bearing on the economy. For example, La Prensa used to have start rumors all the time about full sh shortages of different basic food items, and then what, what do you know that the next day everybody runs out and stockpiles it and there's a shortage? So that was pretty much when they started censoring the newspapers. Something that, that most North Americans don't understand is that newspapers are really unimportant in a country like Nicaragua. If you combine all three major newspapers, the circulation is about 150 copies a day, 150,000 copies a day, whereas the population of Nicaragua is 3 million. All those people way out in the campo, the vast majority of the population, they never get a newspaper, never ever. Where they get their news from is the radio. Everybody's got, a, every fifth house maybe has a radio and everybody goes there at night and listens to the news on their radio. So in terms of press censorship, it's much more important to say that there's no control over news on the radio than to say that there is control over news in the newspapers. And that's something that really people don't realize at all in the US. Although I think maybe, if Americans thought about it a little more, it might make sense to them, because not all that many Americans read the newspaper either. Most Americans get their news from television or from listening to the radio when they're in the car driving to work. So you really feel like you have a sense of what's going on from a whole variety of ways? Oh, much, much more than I would if I was living in a typical town in the U.S. I get news from ranging from the from the extreme right in the case of La Prensa to the sort of hysterical left in the case of the pro-government independent paper Nuevo Diario and then the sort of stodgy pro-government but, but conservative newspaper Barricada which never goes out on a limb but always supports the government position and that's the one that's actually the FSLN owned newspaper and then plus on the radio you get a whole range of views.
So in fact, I get to see much more than I would if I was living in Detroit and only had the Detroit News and the Detroit Free Press, or New York City with just the New York Times, the Post and the Daily News in terms of the breadth of opinion and analysis that I get exposed to every day. Everyone to the defense. Here the non-governmental gov paper says, sinister plan of the Yankees against Puerto Cabezas. The United States looks for a pretext for criminal aggression by the Nuevo Diario. Spoken by Humberto Ortega, who's a member of the um, ruling government, Minister of Defense. Uh, a, um, a judgment against Reagan uh, demands to the end of the so-called exercises against, again, the United States looking for a pretext for its criminal aggression. The Minister of Defense, uh, Humberto Ortega. Here the conservative paper says Stone says he continues to support the Contadora. Here another conservative, the OAS looks for a peaceful solution. And here La Prensa says Cuba uh, is afraid, is fears a naval aerial attack by the United States. The uh, Colombian uh, chancellor speaks out against the invasions. The uh, only way out is the Contadora, total support for the Contadora group, which are a group of uh, different countries against invasion, the Russians. Proposal for peace. The uh, Yankees are without pretext for invading Nicaragua. This is the Barricada, which is the newspaper of the Sandinistas. To win against the invader now, says the headline. They are completely organized to repel invasions by mercenary troops. Nicaragua repeats its uh, call towards sensibility, towards sensibleness. The OAS asks for the uh, end of torpedoing of uh, uh, the Contadora initiatives for peace. Again, Nicaragua speaks out again for reasonableness in the OAS. The uh, popular army breaks a uh, invading base, home base. The CIA continues to provoke uh, Nicaragua. The United States puts pressure on the OAS in order to uh, prevent a condemnation of itself. The diplomatic offensive in attempts to stop war. The vigils are in commemoration of the nearly 1,000 Nicaraguans who have died since 1971 in counter-revolutionary attacks financed and supported by the United States. That is why we're holding the vigil in front of the U.S. Embassy. We will hold this vigil every Friday morning at this hour until such time as the Reagan administration changes its policy of aggression and makes a sincere effort to find a peaceful solution to the conflict in Central America. Today's headline, Today's headline is the United States searching for a pretext for aggression. Fair enough. So this is just like an American family. All we need is Lance Loud down here. <laughs> of the demonstration? Yeah, right here. <clears throat> What's it say? March of, March of North Americans Against Aggressions. We'll hold vigils in front, in front of the U.S. Embassy. I don't see me in this 
particular picture. Let's see if there's another one. Nope. So you're not worried about getting your name on some list and doing it in some CIA file? Or well, I'm afraid that our name is already on those lists or those CIA files just for being in Nicaragua. The only thing that we can hope is that since we're not doing anything illegal, nothing will befall us for having come here. Although people who've seen missing may want to wonder about that. Has your family cautioned you about anything in particular? Well, every time there's stuff in the U.S. press about an escalation of the war or a major new attack by the Contras or rumors of a U.S. invasion, they get very upset and call me up and want to know how I am and you sure you want to stay down there and that kind of stuff. But in general, do they support you? Or oh, they definitely support what I'm doing and they feel that it's a good thing. <clears throat> They're just very worried about what might happen if the United States intervenes directly here. Just picture. Just the baby saying, don't rescue me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing fine right where I am. In okay, here's the don't rescue me, too. Yeah, it's a great picture. <laughs> Don't rescue me, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Got where I, right where I am. Nicaragua is my home. Oh yeah, here, here we are again. Another article. Letter to Reagan. U.S. citizens, residents in Nicaragua um, ask for peace. Statement of U.S. citizens in Nicaragua. Managua, Nicaragua, November 19, 1983. The obsessive desire of the U.S. government to destroy the Nicaraguan Revolution has brought Central America to the threshold of regional war. With the machinery of destruction in place, President Reagan lacks only the pretext and the proper moment for plunging the people of Central America into a catastrophic conflict. Contrary to what the U.S. Ambassador in Nicaragua claims, we do, we do feel that our security in Nicaragua is threatened. It is threatened by U.S.-backed counter-revolutionaries and by the very real possibility of a direct U.S. intervention in this country. At this grave hour, we U.S. citizens in Nicaragua raise our voices in vehement protest against the policy of our government which we see as criminal and destructive. We wish to restate categorically our position enunciated at the time of the invasion of Grenada, that we absolutely refuse to allow the issue of our safety to be used as a pretext for attacking Nicodemus. We're all here to help and to be here with those good intentions and to think that you could be the pretext for the United States coming in in an invasion and destroying all of that that we are working for with our Nicaraguan brothers and sisters, all of this hard work to reconstruct this country is absolutely unthinkable. We cannot permit, as U.S. citizens in Nicaragua, that we be used as a pretext for something like that. And I think it's very important that this message get to the American people. Um, as Marielli pointed out, it was the control over the press that the Reagan administration exercised in Grenada by not permitting the press in that enabled him to pick up his popularity. And I, and I really hope that the press will not permit that to happen a second time in such a small time period with respect to Nicaragua. If the Reagan administration uses us as a pretext, and if that is possible because it has not come out in the U.S. press, that we refuse to be used as such, then their full responsibility for the suffering will lie with the members of the U.S. press who have not publicized our statement and our very real concern that we not be used in this way. Of the armed forces of Nicaragua. Of uh, the armed forces of Honduras. What am I saying? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Excuse me. You have to correct me. I thought I told you the wrong one. The, uh, Tell me, how do you think uh, U.S. citizens and Canadian citizens might be used as a pretext for invasion here? 
Yeah, well, we have spoken out about that first on October the 26th uh, in a statement which we made, and we repeated it today in our press conference, and we, I believe that you will hear the Canadians say today that they object to their diplomatic representative in Central America. find out about Cuban influence in this country and Russian influence? Do you feel like you well, I can get radio, radio Havana and Radio Moscow, but as far as actual Cuban influence, um, I've seen a few Cubans, not too many, two entomologists who have been here during the year and a half that I was here. Those are, those are insect specialists who work in the same area that I do. One was here for six months and then he left and another one has come recently who works on coffee insects. But it's certainly nothing like the U.S. imagines. You don't see Cuban troops marching around and and also, it's such a small place, everybody knows every, everybody, and there's no place where you could hide 5,000 Cuban troops without the whole world knowing about it. And what there is, is a lot of, of Cuban school teachers, especially out in the remote rural areas, people who I think really should be admired because, well, probably about 70% of them are women. They go out alone to very, very remote villages, maybe 100 people on a mountain, an eight-hour walk from the nearest dirt road, in areas where the Contra are attacking constantly. And four or five of these Cuban school teachers have been killed, several more of them have been raped. And I just think that, I mean, they're so courageous, they really deserve a medal, rather than to be vilified by the U.S. press or the U.S. public. Those are the kind of Cubans that are here, also a lot of Cuban doctors. As far as Russians go, I have never seen, well, I saw one person once at the beach who I thought might have been a Russian. That's the closest that I've come, although I do hear that there's a house that has 20 Russian doctors in it out in Leon because in Leon there's a hospital that was donated and so far is completely staffed by Russian doctors until Nicaragua trains enough doctors to take it over themselves. So you don't feel like you're a dupe of the communists? A dupe of the communists? No, definitely not. Uh, in fact, as far as the Soviet Union goes, the Soviet Union has been very, very reluctant to send any kind of aid to Nicaragua, I suppose, because given all that's taken place with Afghanistan and everything, they just don't want to get the kind of press worldwide that they would get if they were involved in the Central American Isthmus. So it's, it's sort of probably been even frustrating for Nicaragua. Soviet Union has given some things, uh, two hospitals, and they promised to build three hydroelectric dams, small ones, and also they've donated 200 tractors and some other machinery. But as far as massive aid of the kind that, that they've been giving to Cuba for the last 20 years, or the kind that many Americans imagine they're giving, it's simply not available, both because they're unwilling to enter this region and also, I think, because they've got their own economic problems right now, and they can't take on another country like Cuba that they'll have to support with $2 million a day. Although I just recently heard a funny story from a Nicaraguan friend of mine who's very pro-Sandinista, and his brother, who lives in Miami, is very anti-Sandinista, but has been away since before the revolution, doesn't really know what it's like here. His brother came to visit for a weekend and said, my God, you people are dupes of the Russians. You're going to become just like Cuba. And the uh, pro-Sandinista Nicaraguan said, well, I don't know if that would be so bad. Let's see, $2 million a day, $700 million a year. That's more than our gross national product. Think what that could buy, you know, schools, uh, education, food for everybody. It wouldn't be so bad. Well, I guess some people in the United States think that it's morally wrong. Uh, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. well, it really isn't a, isn't an issue because it's not happening. Although I think those people ought to think about the morality of the 150 million dollars in military aid that we give to the right wing government in El Salvador. That's certainly responsible for for all, for a tremendously larger number of human rights violations, disappearances, beheadings, people being mutilated than, than the government in Cuba has ever been or has ever been accused of, of having been. So in terms of the morality of massive 
dollar aid. I think those people ought to think about that. So you don't feel like you're in the middle of a struggle between Russia and the United States here? I feel like I'm in a struggle involving the United States, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, Russia is nowhere to be seen. Uh, sometimes I think it's unfortunate because it might just balance things out and give Nicaragua a little breathing space. But on the other hand, I guess it's just as well because the level of, hyster hyster of, of uh, hysteria in the United States would just go wild if that happened. So what I see is a struggle on the part of the United States to, to prevent Nicaragua from developing their example, their, their example of an alternative that works because the U.S. is very, very scared that the rest of the countries that are dependent on us are going to go the same way. This special edition of Paper Tiger Television was shot in Managua and Masaya, Nicaragua in November 1983. It was made by Dee Dee Halleck, Skip Blumberg, Karen Renucci, Shuli Chang, Joel Covell, Joan Breiderman, Eddie Becker, Martha Walner, and Daniel Del Solar. For information or to comment, call 212-362-5287 or 212-663-3887. What follows is Sandinista TV. Y a las 9 y 30 de la noche les presentaremos la serie de acción Profesión Peligro con la participación de Lee Mayor. Veanla hoy a las 9 y 30 por Canal 6. Reúnanse señoras y señores. Suban a bordo del último viaje del pirata Hidalgo. De hace mucho, mucho tiempo en el lejano Caribe. En la programación de mañana domingo para las 4 de la tarde tenemos para ustedes la cinta titulada El Pirata Hidalgo, protagonizada por Berlan Caster y Eva Bartok, una película de aventuras que les invitamos a ver mañana a las 4 por el 6. Los agentes profesionales de INICER son cuidadosamente seleccionados por su capacidad y su integridad. INICER, Instituto Nicaragüense de Seguros y Reaseguros, protección nacional con solidez estatal. Durante 20 años de actividad comercial, Tractor Export ha suministrado a 80 países del mundo cientos de miles de maquinaria agrícola. El éxito de las actividades comerciales de Traxtor Export se basa en la alta tecnología de la industria soviética, en la construcción mecánica que permite fabricar modelos de máquinas que cumplen a plenitud los requisitos del mercado mundial. Belarus es el poderoso tractor soviético que figura entre los mejores del mundo, obteniendo premios en los certámenes y exposiciones en que ha participado por su gran adherencia al terreno, por su potente motor y poderosa tracción. Porque Belarus es el tractor al que se le puede adaptar hasta 230 implementos diferentes. Tractor Export Contribuye a robustecer nuestros vínculos de amistad con el pueblo soviético, trabajando surco a surco en la capacitación de técnicos nacionales en pro de la mecanización del agro. Porque Tractor Export es tecnología y solidaridad 
al servicio del pueblo revolucionario de Nicaragua. Representantes y distribuidores Agromac. Familias, el sistema sandinista de televisión les invita a presenciar mañana a las 8 y 30 de la noche otro espacio de variedades dominicales, presentándoles esta vez un musical de la serie Bong, producto de la República Democrática Alemana. Variedades dominicales a las 8 y 30 de la noche por Canal 6. De cara al pueblo, síntesis de la democracia popular sandinista. Mi nombre es uh, Dr. Harold Osborne, yo soy médico de Nueva York. I live in New York, and before I came here, people, some people, expressed concern for my safety. Yo vivo en Nueva York, y antes de venir aquí, muchos me expresaron su preocupación por mi seguridad. But I have felt safer on the streets of Managua Pero me he sentido más seguro en las calles de Managua than in the streets of New York, my que, own city. Que en las calles de Nueva York. 